Hi, my name is Lauren here on Little House Plants. Today we are going to be doing a two month update on my Equigenera um, plants, <laughs> on my plants from the pop up. So we will just be going over how I have been caring for them and how they are all doing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start with the queen anthuriums that I bought. Um, I honestly was the most excited for these queens. I have a love for queen anthuriums. They just are very pretty. So this is my first queen who is a little stuck to her tray. Um, this one was considered the full-sized queen um, anthurium royal queenum. I paid 48 yeah, $48.75 for this beauty. Um, I They all came with their roots just wrapped and then I potted them up in moss in the net, in these net pots. Um, as you can tell, the roots are doing really well. They're starting to grow out the bottom um, and outside of the pot, which is fine. It's not a problem. Um, if it gets to be too bad, I'll end up repotting it. And at that point, I usually just cut the net pots. These are really cheap, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, but it lives in my IKEA cabinet behind me, the black one, and just on its little tray like this. I water it so the top part of the moss is damp, and then I leave a little bit of water in the, um, in the tray so that the moss can soak that up. I usually let it sit for about an hour. If there's anything left over after that point, I'll dump it out so it doesn't sit for too long. But that one is doing really well. We have no new leaves, which is sad, but it'll happen eventually. This one was considered what, well, I think it was considered the seedling. There wasn't anything to say otherwise, and they're almost the same size, but let's see, how much did I pay for the seedling? Um, I paid $26.25 for this one, which is very pretty. Um, she just has skinnier leaves, they aren't as wide as the other one. This one again is also in a net pot and some moss. And we've got lots of happy roots in there and some coming out the bottom, which I think is so exciting. Um, I love to see happy and healthy roots. Um, I think they're still just getting acclimated and then eventually we'll have a new leaf, but for now they are just, you know, thriving, getting used to their new home. Um, as you could tell, I didn't have any yellowing leaves, any weird fungus, anything like that. The leaves that I, um, that came on the plants are doing just fine, so that's perfect. Um, we are going to go now to the other anthurium that I pre-ordered, so I pre-ordered these plants just to preface that. <laughs> this one is my Anthurium Pallidiforum that I bought. Um, the Anthurium Pallidiforum, I paid $22.50 for this one. Um, this right here, this lovely little lady, is a new leaf. And then, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not, but I'm going to try. See if it'll focus. Um, right where my finger is pointing, there's a tiny, tiny green stem. Tiny, tiny. Um, and that is another new leaf on its way. So that is super exciting. Um, I love that this plant is just getting used to my environment and that it is so happy it is putting out new leaves. Um, I haven't checked on its roots. When I got it, it had like tiny, tiny baby roots. So let's check on it. Look at those! <laughs> those are so fun! Okay, it looks like they were sticking to the inside of my pot, so I might need to up the size of its cover pot, but we'll save that for another day. Yeah, so this one is doing very well. I'm very happy with it. Very excited about how well it is doing. Um, this one also just lives in my Ethereum. sorry, in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet behind me and I just water it when the damp when the moss is dry <laughs> you guys I can't get my words straight um, I water it when the moss is dry 
and I just give it enough that it'll dampen it and then I just let it sit. So it's doing really well. Um, while we are on the topic of anthuriums, these are my two that are not doing the best. Um, <laughs> so we'll talk about these two next. They are living in my bin, my bin of plants. Um, if you guys watched my previous video, this is where I kept the plants when I first got them. I made like a contraption, I put them all in here, um, what's missed them um, so that there was lots of humidity and that's how I helped acclimate them. These two have not done very well at acclimating. So they are still here. And I'll show you why I say that now. This is my, I think it's the dark form. Nope. My Anthurium Forgetii White Stripes, as beautiful as she is. Um, it's just in moss like the other plants. What a bug I see, what is that? Um, I'm gonna see if I can show you guys this little tiny, tiny bit right there. Where my finger is, it'll show you, yep. So right there is a dead new leaf. So it tried to grow a new leaf, but then it shriveled up and died because the humidity was too low. I do live in Utah. It's a very dry climate here. So I'm keeping it in the bin to try and keep the humidity levels up. I don't know if I'll be able to acclimate it, but we'll see. Um, we do still have some good roots. Um, its roots are doing just fine. Not as well as the other plants, but well enough you know i haven't lost any leaves except for that one that tried to grow in so yeah she's still super pretty i just want to make sure she's super happy so um this next one is a little bit more sad um it's my anthurium regal <laughs> it's so bad you guys look at this leaf it's terrible um and then I was so excited it was growing a new leaf, it was doing so well, but that new leaf dried up. So I should have kept it in the cabinet, but I honestly just had it out in the room and it started to dry up. So now I've got it back in the bin. I'm hoping, I don't know if that can be, that's like mushy and dead. So I just, I don't even know what to do. Um, I'm gonna give it some super thrive and keep it in a humid place. And hopefully it'll push out another leaf that will actually survive. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> so this is the, I believe it's a regal. Oh, I apologize, it's a magnificum. It's not a regal, it's a magnificum. But it is not doing magnific magnificent, how do you say that? Magnificent. <laughs> That was a bad joke anyways, so. Um, I paid 50 for this one and 60 for this one. And I bought these ones at the pop-up. So these ones I did not pre-order. They were there and I bought them, picked them out there, grabbed them home. And they hate me, so. I'd send them back to Ecuador if I could. I think they'd be happier there, but I can't. Cannot afford that. Back in the box they go. And then the box just sits under the light of my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Yes, fun stuff. Now on to the philodendrons. Okay, now we are gonna talk about the philodendrons that I bought. Um, I only got three philodendrons and these ones were all in the pre-order. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I actually purchased the pre-order around the 4th of July and they had a 40% off sale going on. Um, I know I mentioned that in my first video, but if you haven't seen it, first of all, go check it out. Um, but now you know. <laughs> There's a reason the prices are like, you know, $41.50. Um, and I feel like I got them for a pretty good deal. so. I, if you have a pop-up coming up, I would highly recommend you find out the last day that you can pre-order and then keep an eye out for any sales or deals going on 
um, before that date. So this was their 4th of July sale. The last day to order I think was either on the 6th or the 7th of July. So I like barely got it in right before, but because I waited for, cause I knew they would do something for the 4th of July. Most places do. Um, and so because I waited, I was able to get 40% off of my plants and to get more plants. So little tidbits for you. <laughs> okay, we'll start with my favorite. I love them all, but this one is killing me. I just adore it. Let's see, we'll move this one a little bit. Okay, this is the, I believe it's just the Pastazanum. Yep, the Pastazanum. She has four beautiful leaves. Um, this one right here kind of, make sure I'm showing you the right leaf. Aha. This one right here is the newest leaf. And then we have a fifth one on its way. Um, I have had lots of luck with pasta zanums. I have this one that's smaller um, and then a big one up on top of my cabinet that you can't see right now. Maybe we'll show you some B-roll, maybe, I don't know. But this one has been super easy going. It adapted very quickly to my room environment. Um, it is living in moss, so same rules apply with this one. I water it um, when the moss is dry, which is right now. Um, this pot has holes in it, kind of like the net pots do, so it can drain out, which is nice. Um, if you'll take a look at these roots, they are kind of insane. There are so many roots in there. They're kind of just going crazy. So I think it's about time for a repot. Um, but I want to get, um, because this is a crawling philodendron, I want to get it a long rectangular pot. Um, so I just need to find a good affordable one of those. Um, like this is an old soup container, you know? Um, not that I'm cheap, but I'm also not super expensive, you know? <laughs> like I don't wanna go spend $50 on a planter. It's not my favorite thing to do. So I've gotta find a good cheap rectangular one to pot this gal up in, but she's doing just fine where she's at. So, oh, and I have to tell you how much that cost. Pause, pastazanum, just the pastazanum was $19.72 with the discount. I wish they'd tell me what it was before, but they don't. So you can do that math if you want to, but I'm not going to. I will not do that math for you. Okay, this one is also super cool. This is the Philodendron Plowmanii and Pastazanum Hybrid. Um, she needs a better pot, cause she does that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have it also living in a net pot. Um, we've got some good happy roots in there. They don't really poke out the sides. If they do, they kind of dry up. So, but yeah, she's just a little top heavy. So it needs a better pot um, or a rectangular side pot. Someone commented that. And if you commented that on my video, if you know where I can get them, for cheap, send me a message. Like, let me know. Drop it in the comments. <laughs> um, this is the newest leaf that it put out. It is still shiny and beautiful, and I'm obsessed with it. The ones that came are kind of like, were beat up in the transit and stuff, so I'm really excited about this new one. It made me fall in love with the plant just a little bit more, so kind of fun. I'm really excited about it. And that sits, these ones both sit outside of my cabinet. So this one, the pastazanum sits on top of my Ikea cabinet. Then I have this one on a shelf with a grow light in front of it. So I don't wanna show you guys this next one. <laughs> this next one is like a joke, honestly. Um, the hybrid though, let me tell you how much it costs. So the hybrid was $41.25. So I think she was worth it. She's pretty cool. Okay, this last one I probably should just put back in moss. 
but she's in soil. I thought it would be better for her, but I think she might be happier in moss. I don't know. This is my Gloriosum Verde. Uh, obviously this leaf is dying. I'm going to wait for it to go completely yellow um, before I chop it off. So then this one is like on its way there. <laughs> It's all curled up all the time. And I water this plant like I just watered it. Um, but it's still so dry. So that's why I'm thinking I should put it in moss because the moss will stay damp longer. Um, and then I can stick it in like my cabinet or something and it might do better. Um, it gave me this leaf. This like won wonky little leaf. <laughs> um, I'm not very happy with it, if I'm honest. My dream is to have this big, pillowy philodendron gloriosum that just sits on my counter, but I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think I'm gonna keep getting wonky little leaves. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just stick to my hybrids and my pastazanums because those guys seem to really like me and like the way I take care of them. But my Gloriosums aren't super happy with me. So um, this one especially, um, it needs some TLC and I, yeah. <laughs> so for right now, it's sitting in dirt um, and it sits in my room. But I think I am going to put it in moss and then put it in a cabinet. And we'll see if it'll do better that way. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what will happen. But yeah. Those are my plants. Um, can I do a bonus update? Let's show you guys a bonus update. Can we do that? Come here. Okay. So while we're talking about plants and philodendrons, a year ago for my anniversary, my husband bought me a philodendron McDowell from a seller on Facebook. Um, it shipped from Florida and it came to me with terrible root rot. It was supposed to be this big, fabulous philodendron with three leaves and I ended up having to chop all the leaves off and this is the last, this is what grew in after that. Um, and it sat just like this with just one leaf and a growth point for about a year. And then I transitioned it from soil back into perlite and the roots started to grow again. And now we have some growth. So the anniversary plant, which is the name of this plant, it is so lovingly known as the anniversary plant on my Instagram, um, is growing. And I am so excited. It's been a whole year of just this stupid leaf. <laughs> and now I am getting another one. So I'm so excited. Um, it'll be really cool and it'll be fun to see this plant grow and yeah. If you guys want to see its journey, um, you can check out my Instagram at Lil House Plant and you can follow its whole journey in the highlight called Anniversary Plant. So yeah. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching and for joining me today. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up or even subscribe to my channel. We make new plant videos and we release them every other Wednesday. Um, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, jokes, anything like that, feel free to comment it down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye.